Thanks again for checking out this video. If you're trying to decide between the EF and the RF lens, this video is for you. So there comes a time in every photographer or videographer's career where they come to the realization that it never really was about the camera specs or the camera that you shoot with. Of course, having the ability to have a faster mechanical shutter to ensure that you do get the shot or having access to higher megapixel count to get crystal clear images and maybe even shooting on an AK sensor to give you the most stunning videos. Make it feel like you need to buy an expensive body to get those results, right? Well, not necessarily. And like I mentioned earlier, as you grow in your profession of content creation, you start to really understand the value of the glass that you choose to use. Now, after five years of running my business, I want to introduce you to my newest and most expensive lens that I've ever purchased, Canon's 70 to 200 EF 2.8 lens. Now you're probably like, hey, wait, Joey, dude, that lens is super old. Canon doesn't even make EF camera bodies anymore. Why would you ever invest in that dinosaur? Well, let's break this one down into three parts. Number one is its compatibility. Number two is its track record. And lastly, number three, the price point. Now, before we jump into all of that, I wanted to just share with you my real world experience so that you have a better understanding of what images this lens produced for me. So just last year in 2021, I went on tour with the band and my friends, Kolohe Kai. Where the only two lenses that I used for photography were the 35 and 50 millimeter RF lenses. With these two, I had to really get up close and personal to the artist and band members to get these photos. Now these were all shot on the USR. Now the same thing happened when I was shooting video and because the furthest focal length that I had was the 85 millimeter prime Rokinon lens for my Blackmagic cameras, I was only able to get certain shots depending on where I was at. Now this again made getting up close and personal with a big cinema camera rig pretty impossible to miss on stage. And the number one thing you want to do when filming an artist at any concert is to never take the limelight away from them and just do your job and sort of blend in behind the scenes. Now fast forward to this year, I was invited back to another tour with the exact same band, but this time I had my 70 to 200 to take care of business. Now, because this is a variable zoom lens with a fast aperture of 2.8, I was able to push into my subjects from far away to get both photos on my EOS R as well as video on my Blackmagic cameras, giving my photos and videos a more up close and personal feel. And what's great about this lens is that no matter the focal length you're at, whether it's at 70 or pushed all the way into 200 millimeters, the aperture remains constant and the focus doesn't shift, making it super easy to keep your focus as you decide which focal length to use. So let's go back to our breakdown and start with number one, compatibility. Now with the introduction of the new RF mount by Canon, they designed an EF to RF adapter where it makes connecting older EF lenses as simple as one click essentially future-proofing any older lenses. Now, because I shoot on RF mirrorless cameras from Canon and Blackmagic Cinema cameras that have EF mounts, this made my decision to purchase the EF mount an absolute no-brainer. Now, I'm able to go back and forth depending on my project needs without feeling stuck like I would have if I had just purchased the RF version. And keep in mind that Canon has not made any RF to EF adapters, so any RF mount lenses that you buy now will most likely never be able to be used on other EF cameras like Canon's older DSLRs or Blackmagic EF cameras. Next up, number two, the track record. Now the most recent lens available in retail stores will be the Mark III or third generation of this lens, meaning it has history in the game. This lens has had three prior iterations dating all the way back to its first release in March of 1995. Now this EF version has been used for over 25 years on the market so it has significant upgrades leading up to this new Mark III. Now when it comes to the new RF version which hit the market in November of 2019, it is fairly new and I'm almost positive with how fast Canon releases new products every year, we'll see an upgraded Mark II version within the next 
probably three to five years. Now the major difference you'll see from the EF to the RF version is going to be its build as well as its size. The EF version is just massive compared to the RF, but when in hand, there's just something really gratifying about holding up what most consider as the holy grail of lenses, knowing that your images, no matter what you shoot, is gonna look absolutely beautiful. Now lastly, we'll touch on that price point. Now of the two versions, there is going to be a massive difference that separates the two. The EF comes in at $2,099, whereas the RF version sits at a hefty $2,799. Now for me to justify paying a difference of over $700 makes me lean heavily towards the EF version because of everything that it offers from its build all the way to its versatility. And with over $700 of savings, I would recommend investing that same money into additional lenses like the 35 or 50 millimeter RF lenses. It just makes sense financially as well as creatively because you have more lenses. Now another plus that comes with these lenses are holiday sales as well. From Black Friday to spring and even summer, be on the lookout for Canon as they always offer deals where they drop the price sometimes around that $200 mark. So time your purchases accordingly. Now with all that said, I absolutely think that the EF and RF versions of Canon 70 to 200 f2.8 lenses are exceptional buys and it really comes down to preference and how you use your cameras and what you need these lenses to do and in my opinion i would without a doubt go for the ef version now hopefully this video does help you in your purchasing decision if you're looking to add this lens to your workflow let me know your thoughts in the comments below on my take with this lens and if you agree or maybe even disagree and also make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel as i'll be posting more content around videography thanks again for watching guys and i'll See you on the next one. Gonna Peace. do it like me. Cause there ain't nobody.